The average guy in the street is affected by inflation because of the loss of purchasing power. And as a consequence, his standard of living is declining if he can't keep up with the inflation rate. When we went off gold backing of the dollar, what used to happen prior to that is the husband went to work, the wife stayed at home, raised the family. Because of inflation in the 70s, the wife went to work. So now you had two incomes that were necessary to produce and buy the same goods and services. In the 90s, we stopped saving. The savings rate basically got down to zero because people were spending, they couldn't save in order to buy the same goods and services. Then we got to the last decade, the wife was already working, the savings were down to zero, they borrowed money. And so we've gone from two earners getting rid of our savings rate to borrowing money to keep pace with inflation. The average person is now forced to borrow well beyond their means, getting themselves deeply into debt. At first, this was to maintain a nice standard of living, but slowly, it has become necessary just to survive. By printing so much currency and devaluing it so heavily, it would seem that governments are essentially levying a hidden tax on their people. Central banks try to say that 2% or 3% inflation is a good thing and they make that a target. Well, it's still a tax. Why is 2% inflation or 3% inflation better for the country than no, uh, than no inflation? You'll be told, of course, that it's better than deflation and you'll be told that uh, people like to feel that their money or their jobs or their wages are going up by 2%, at least it's something. Well, in fact, that 2% is robbery and, and, the, and the, the, what they get is going down by that amount. I think the guy on the street is, he's kind of frustrated. They go, gosh, I went to college, I don't have a job, I can't get a job, I spent all this money, I've got student loans, it's costing me more to live. The Fed is telling me there's no inflation, yet I go to the store and I see the price of milk going up, eggs, meat. I pull into a gas station, it's costing me more for gas. They don't really understand how all this affects them on a personal level. And that's why I think they're frustrated because there isn't uh, an educational system that explains that, look, when you print money, when you have nothing backing it, and when you debase it, you have all the side effects that you see higher inflation costs, corruption, cronyism, all the things that have been in headlines that we've seen over the last four or five years. The protest movements are an interesting phenomenon. A lot of people are terribly upset with Wall Street. They're upset what's happening to their purchasing power. They're upset with the news that they hear uh, of the fact that the executives of these giant banks are getting million dollar bonuses at the same time they're dipping into the pockets of the taxpayers to get all this bailout money and so they're, they're angry. Unfortunately people are demonstrating against the crisis, the economic crisis, and yet at the same time they're demanding more welfare, demanding more medical benefits, they're demanding more state uh, control and regulation of their lives, they're demanding more money being created and pumped into the society, they don't realize that those are the very things that have brought them onto the street in the first place in their anger.